Yes. Uh, ready? Shall we start now? Yeah. Yes. So next is, so we had discussed entropy, we had discussed enthalpy uh, in detail earlier only. So next we have second law of thermodynamics. thermodynamics okay that is slot okay so we have different different statement statements for this second law of thermodynamics the first one we have clausius statement basically different different way to represent it all these statement you should know Clausius statement. It says it is impossible to construct impossible to construct a machine construct a machine with with 100% efficiency. Basically 100% efficiency is not possible. Okay. This also means, this also means that complete conversion of of heat into work into work is not possible okay right and on the basis of this statement only we have the another form of second law of thermodynamics and it says it is impossible It is impossible to convert heat into work, heat into work without compensation. Heat into work without compensation, right? Means you have to do some change into the system. Then only it is possible. If equal amount of heat, uh, you know, if you want to convert that heat into work, you have to do some compensation. Otherwise complete conversion is not possible. Next, it also states that It also states that that the entropy of the universe of the universe increases increases in a spontaneous process. in a spontaneous process and remains unchanged. Remains unchanged at equilibrium.
it is second law of thermodynamics anubhati then all these statement no all these statement are second law of thermodynamics only basically this statement the first one is given by a scientist called clausius so we call it clausius statement such name we do not have here just you should know this it is not it true. also states that the entropy of the universe increases in a spontaneous process and remains unchanged at equilibrium okay. entropy entropy Yeah. Okay. So mathematically, what we can write, delta s of the universe is keeps on is kept on increasing, greater than zero. and we know delta s universe means delta s total basically so it is delta s of system plus delta s of surroundings system and surroundings okay one second okay yeah so universe entropy keeps on increasing that also we say one statement of this that the entropy of the universe keeps on increasing right so this is the mathematical statement we have at equilibrium what we can write equilibrium we can write delta s of universe is equals to delta s of system plus delta s of surrounding which is equals to zero this is at equilibrium right for reversible process we have seen this uh, uh, this relation already for reversible process the expression of entropy change it is dq by t already we have discussed it right the definition of entropy is this only 
and if the process is irreversible irreversible we know the entropy change is greater than dq by t so if you combine these two statement it gives ds is greater equal to dq by this is the combined statement or we say it is a mathematical you know um a statement of second law of thermodynamics statement of slot second law of thermodynamics okay so this is a statement for second law of thermodynamics you should know ha at equilibrium it is equal whatever the change in entropy first of all the change suppose at equilibrium system entropy decreases with the same amount the surrounding entropy increases so it terms if you add the two it will be zero so change will be zero delta s the change in entropy of the universe or total entropy change at equilibrium would be zero you can also say that at equilibrium the magnitude of entropy change for system and surroundings will be equal but they are of opposite nature means what if system entropy increases by some value with the same value the surroundings entropy decreases hence the sum is zero clear acha okay now you see this see we had started all this discussion with spontaneity that is spontaneous process right for spontaneity the condition is what we discussed we discussed two conditions are there first is the enthalpy should be less than 0 exothermic this is what we see exothermic and the second one was what what is the second one tell me the second one anyone what is the second factor for any process to possible delta s greater than zero no that's not second factor is randomness that's what i said no that randomness will increase right remember that endothermic examples those process were taking place because of they are going towards the more randomness okay if you go back and check the uh you know relation over there okay uh, h2o liquid converts into h2o gas so gas will have more entropy than liquid you go back and check h2o liquid convert into h2o gas wait a second You see this this reaction we were discussing it was endothermic it was endothermic right why this reaction was taking place because it is going towards more randomness you see solid and liquid liquid is more random than solid liquid to gas gas is more random than liquid all these are solid solids and one gas is there so for all these reactions you see entropy is increasing if you are going towards the right and hence the process was taking place randomness was increasing so second factor was randomness first was enthalpy second was randomness right these two factors we have 
for the spontaneity. Is it clear now? Yes. These two factors we were discussing for spontaneity, either delta H should be less than zero exothermic process or randomness should increase. So whenever you, are need, we, you, you need to judge any process, whether it is, you know, spontaneous or not, you need to think of exothermic, like, sorry, uh, enthalpy change and the randomness. Randomness means entropy you need to check. means enthalpy and entropy, two factors you need to calculate in order to find out the spontaneity of any process. So later on what we did, because both are temperature dependent process, this and this both are temperature dependent process. So later on what we did, we thought that instead of, you know, finding, instead of considering two factors, that is enthalpy and entropy and find out the spontaneity of any process. Why don't we club these two factors and we'll give a new thermodynamic term. And based on that single thermodynamic term, the new thermodynamic term, we can say the given process is spontaneous or not. Correct? So in with this thought process, what they have done, they have defined again a new thermodynamic term that is gives free energy. Gives free energy represented by G. So what is the use of this gives free energy? They have defined this just in order to, you know, understand whether the process is spontaneous or not, like just based on one term. Yes. So what they did, they club the two term enthalpy and entropy, and they have given a new thermodynamic term. Okay. Statement for this, what is Gibbs free energy write down? It is it is the thermodynamic quantity thermodynamic quantity of a system of a system and it is and it is the or this is equals to equals to the amount of useful work done terms you must keep in mind i'm writing on useful work done amount of useful work done by the system. By the system. Basically what we say, this useful work done is nothing but the non-expansion work done, non-PV work. In this, the pressure volume is not involved, non-PV work. Like suppose you have a chair over here. You take this chair and put it somewhere else, right? From the bedroom to hall, if you put it a chair, you have done some work, right? This work is non-useful work, non-expansion work, right? This is the work we have over here. So if I take a chair from here and keep it some other, some, like some, somewhere else, I have done some work. This work equals to the decrease in my gifts free energy, right? I have a pen over here. I keep this pen. I take this pen from here and I keep it somewhere else. So I have done some work, right? This work is done at the cost of my gifts free energy, right? So what we can say, the useful work done, useful work done, is equals to the decrease in in gives free energy useful work done 
is equals to the decrease in gas free energy of the system so if you have done some useful work your gas free energy decreases ha ah, wait wait prakul i will come to that point one by one okay okay so this is what the meaning of it right you what is useful work done so it is the work done equals to the decrease in gas free energy of the system correct that what that is what the physical significance of gas free energy you do some work you you do some work at the cost of your gas free energy right that is a physical significance of it mathematically how it is defined did you copy all of you did you copy this yeah mathematically how it is defined the mathematical definition of gas free energy is it is g is equals to h minus ts where s is the entropy t is the temperature h is the enthalpy and g is gas free energy okay so like i said in instead of you know uh, calculating or you no know, understanding this enthalpy and entropy and then we'll say whether the process is spontaneous or not we have clubbed the two term with the help of temperature and given a new thermodynamic term which is delta g and on the basis of this only delta g or gibbs free energy we can say that the process is spontaneous or not what is the condition of spontaneity we'll see that but we don't have to judge now what is enthalpy what is entropy because instead of these two we have single term that is gibbs free energy here okay so delta g the change in gibbs free energy we can write delta h minus t delta s at a given temperature this equation we call it as gibbs helmholtz equation h e l m h o l t z equation copy this on okay <clears throat> okay so we'll see the condition of spontaneity now okay we'll see the condition of spontaneity what should be the value of g gives free energy so that the process would be spontaneous write down write down here condition of spontaneity generally what happens any reaction takes place at a constant temperature and pressure so that's is what we are assuming what we are assuming our assumption is constant temperature and pressure constant temperature and pressure now suppose at this condition i am assuming again q amount of heat q amount of heat is given by the system 
to the surroundings. So system is giving heat, right? System is giving heat. What is delta S total? Obviously delta S total, we know it is greater than zero always, right? But we can also write this as delta S because second law, we know entropy keeps on increasing, right? Delta S total will be greater than zero. And this we can write delta S of system plus delta S of surroundings. Okay. Now, okay. See, system is losing heat. What Q amount? So what we can write minus Q of the system and the amount of heat releases by the system equals to the amount of heat gained by the surrounding. So minus Q system is equals to plus Q surrounding, right? And since we have the constant uh, pressure here, so at constant pressure, the heat exchange is nothing but the enthalpy change. Delta H of the system. Can we write this? Yes or no? Is it clear this expression? Yes, guys, respond quickly. Right? Whatever the heat is given by the system, so minus Q of system is equals to the surroundings will take equal amount of heat, so plus Q for the surroundings. And since we have constant pressure, so heat exchange of the system is nothing but the enthalpy change of the system because we know heat enthalpy is nothing but the heat content of the system at constant pressure. Yes? Okay. So what is the entropy change of the surroundings. Can we write this as plus Q surrounding by T? Yes. Whatever heat surrounding will take that divided by the temperature at which the process is taking place. That is the entropy change. Standard definition we have. Okay. But this Q surrounding is equals to what? delta H of the system. But here I forgot to mention this negative sign because Q system is delta H system. Minus Q system is minus H delta H system. Okay, same thing. So we can write delta S of surroundings is equals to minus delta H of the system divided by T. You see, we have enthalpy of system and entropy of surroundings. Take care of this, okay? It is surrounding here, it is system here. Now this I will substitute in this expression, in this expression. So what we get here, you see, delta S of the system and delta S of surrounding equals to minus delta H of the system by T. You will understand why I have done this change over here, you will get it. So could you see here, this expression, if you take LCM and just, and just you simplify this, you'll get minus of delta H of the system minus T delta S of the system, isn't it? Yes or no? Right? And what is this expression? Delta H minus T delta S. What is this expression? Ah, so I'll write down T this side. T delta S total. Okay. So this expression is nothing but the change in Gibbs free energy. So can we write this as minus delta G of the system, right hand side? Right? 
isn't it? Correct. So what is the expression you get here, you see? The expression we get here is the change in gives free energy of the system is equals to minus T into the total change in entropy. Correct. We know this del delta S total is always positive. We know this fact. Delta S total is always positive for a spontaneous process. For a spontaneous process. So for any process to be spontaneous, the delta G of the system should be less than zero. So this is the condition of spontaneity we have. So instead of calculating enthal enthalpy and entropy, we'll simply find out the change in gives free energy. If it is coming out to be negative, that is less than zero, it means the process is said to be an spontaneous process. Is it clear? Yeah, I'll go back. Let me know once you're done. Yeah. So this is the condition we have. So what happens here from where, from where uh, did we get this condition? We know this fact that for a spontaneous process, for a spontaneous process, delta S total is greater than zero, which leads to delta G less than zero of the system, right? For non-spontaneous process, it is opposite For non-spontaneous process, it's 
spontaneous process delta s total is less than 0 so delta g is positive when delta g is positive then the process won't occur in forward direction but it may go in backward direction right so right on forward direction processes won't go process does not occur in forward direction but may occur in backward direction right down here Achha, you just copy this one one important information i need to share with you those who all you know takes bio classes right those who all takes bio classes uh, for coming week this week and the coming week you will have bio classes on wednesday okay so this is this arrangement we have for this chain we have for just uh, for the next for the coming two classes okay next two classes and then after that, you'll have the same schedule Monday and Friday. Okay, so tomorrow you all have a biology class from 4 to 7.30. Correct? So all those who takes bio classes, please keep this in mind and take note of it. Tomorrow, 4 to 7.30. Okay, done this. See, at equilibrium, No, Friday you do not have, you have a one class only in a week. That is for three and a half hour, okay? For this two week, tomorrow and the next week classes, okay? And then you will have the normal schedule after 10th of December. Okay? So Friday guys, you do not have any class on Friday, only one class tomorrow and one class on next Wednesday, next week, Wednesday, for three and a half hour. Are you lagging behind the syllabus, biology? Okay, see this. At equilibrium, we have delta S total equals to zero. There's no change in entropy is equals to zero. Hence, delta G is equals to zero also at equilibrium. Got it? Okay, now you see, yes. Now the next thing you see, the role of temperature in spontaneity. Role of temperature in spontaneity. We know the relation of delta G is equals to delta H minus T delta S. We just need to check whether delta G is negative, positive, or zero. Accordingly, we can say it is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Two processes we have possible. Either we have exothermic or we have endothermic. Exothermic or endothermic. So in exothermic process, you see, we know delta H is what? Delta H is negative. 
exothermic process delta h is negative so this term is negative right you see here we have delta h minus t delta s delta g listen to me carefully you can write down a bit later this delta h is negative already right it is negative if if t delta s is positive then this is positive one negative sign already we have means delta g is negative in this case yes or no for exothermic process this means for exothermic process if t delta s is positive then the process will be spontaneous at all temperature whatever temperature you take if it is positive it is spontaneous the process will be spontaneous at all temperature clear did you understand this all of you condition you must understand you will get questions on this only like this only you will get questions okay i am taking this condition i don't know whether it is positive or negative but what happens if it is positive we'll see we'll, we'll see the next condition also if t delta s is negative then what happens tell me did you get it okay second condition is if t delta s is negative you see this the expression is delta g is equals to delta h minus t delta s since the process is exothermic so delta h is negative t delta s i am assuming it is a negative here so obviously this negative this negative becomes positive correct so for condition for delta g to be negative is what for delta g to be negative the condition is what the magnitude of delta h should be more than the magnitude of delta ts t delta s is it right right so this condition can be achieved obviously this entropy you need to decrease so this condition can be achieved can be achieved by decreasing or lowering temperature decreasing temperature correct so basically if t delta s is negative then the process will be spontaneous at lower temperature at higher temperature is possible that t delta s becomes more than delta h and hence it becomes non spontaneous right any doubt
yes done understood okay now you see the second condition we have when the process is endothermic endothermic process delta h is greater than 0 positive right so you see here delta g is equals to delta h minus t delta s delta h is positive this is positive right so if t delta s is also positive if t delta s is greater than 0 so for the condition for this to be spontaneous is what the magnitude of delta h should be less than the magnitude of t delta s and this condition we can achieve by increasing temperature because as temperature increases entropy increases and this condition can be is possible if t delta s is negative then if t delta s is negative right then the process will never be never be spontaneous yeah copied yeah so one more relation we'll see here for today and this is almost uh, done right on standard free energy change okay write down it is the it is a free energy change change for a process for a process at a standard condition basically so standard condition is 298 kelvin and one atmospheric pressure and one more thing here condition must be standard in which in which the reactants and products the reactants and products are are in their standard state 
standard state okay are in their standard state so at a standard state the gibbs free energy is written as delta g not this dot means it is at standard state so all the term will be in their standard state delta h not t delta s not this is a relation at standard state and this is standard free energy change right we have a relation here that is delta g is equals to delta g not plus rt ln q this terms you know a little bit you will understand in chemical equilibrium because it is applicable for reversible reaction this relation okay q is the have you have you done chemical equilibrium in school q is the reaction quotient acha okay q is the reaction quotient little bit i'll tell you this formula you just memorize it we'll discuss this later in chemical equilibrium delta g is the free energy change gibbs free energy change this is the gibbs free energy change at standard state gas constant temperature q is the reaction quotient what is reaction quotient i'll tell you this is first of all valid for reversible reaction a gives b so reaction quotient q is equals to the concentration of b divided by concentration of a at any time t which is not equals to t equilibrium means you can take the ratio of product and reactant at any time but that time should not be equal to the t equilibrium right just you keep this in mind q is product by reactant that is it concentration of product by concentration of reactant that is q but not the equilibrium concentration just one thing you have to keep in mind okay usually i take up this chapter after equilibrium chemical equilibrium and ionic equilibrium thermodynamics is for me it is the last chapter of your grade 11 physical chemistry but since they have taken this up in the school so i have taken it earlier right so this thing you will understand in chemical equilibrium which is the next chapter we have correct so what is q reaction quotient concentration of product by concentration of reactant valid only in reversible reaction this concentration must not be equilibrium concentration if t is equals to t equilibrium means once the equilibrium is achieved then this q becomes reaction quotient becomes kc what is kc kc is the equilibrium constant equilibrium constant this is also nothing but the ratio of the concentration so kc how do we define again it is the concentration of product by concentration of reactant but the difference here it is what that this concentration is the concentration at equilibrium this is the only difference we have so when the equilibrium is achieved q becomes kc if not then q is q only that is reaction quotient clear yes tell me yeah now now i am taking the equilibrium condition at equilibrium what we can write delta g is equals to 0 and q becomes kc so what is delta g not minus 2.303 rt 
log kc right this is the expression we have ln we convert into log 2.303 we multiply okay this is the expression we get so what is kc that is equilibrium constant is equals to we can also write this as e to the power minus delta g by rt is also we can write if you take ln over there both relation is true this is also true this is also true right so if you draw a graph last thing between k and delta g not delta g not it is an exponential graph the graph goes like this exponential graph the graph goes like this you see here if uh, delta g not becomes zero what is the value of kc could you tell me delta g not equals to zero what is the value of kc one right suppose this is zero this value is zero delta g not is zero over here this side it is positive and this side it is negative left side of this so corresponding to this zero value of delta g this value is one right means if you have delta g less than zero then value of kc should be always greater, greater than one so for a spontaneous process what we can write here you see for a spontaneous process process we know delta g not is less than zero means we have no on the left side of this point zero and whenever you come to this side kc value will be more than one if you look at the graph so kc is greater than one this is the condition we have for this one any doubt type in guys quickly did you understand this this is a big chapter right so i haven't taken so much you know numericals today only one we have done uh, i will share the notes the you know the pdf with you the assignment that you must solve okay we have done the first part of this chapter second part is thermochemistry which will start next class and will finish it up right so assignment you must solve you will understand what all formula and concepts we have discussed correct most probably next class we'll solve some questions also before before starting the second part of it that is thermochemistry okay understood all of you please type in quickly yes okay see you in the next class i will share the assignment okay in some time can solve those assignments yeah bye take care thank you